If you've ever felt like the narcissist in your life hates you, don't take it personally. There are at least six people that the narcissist hates simply for existing in their world. So let's go ahead and take a closer look because this may explain a thing or two about how you were treated and also why it is not your fault. So the first person a narcissist hates is someone who is authentically themselves. You may notice in those moments when you are the youest of you, that's when the narcissist's words will cut you down at your knees. And from someone who's been there, I can tell you, it makes you feel like there's something wrong with being you. So maybe they'll make fun of you in these moments, or maybe they'll have a harsh criticism of you, but you'll notice that it's consistent. Whenever you show up as you, they show up to cut you down. And this may come through when you're expressing yourself creatively or just being downright silly. And I have to be honest, there's really nothing worse than hanging around someone who will act this way. People like this are what Brene Brown calls candle blower outers because they just can't wait to extinguish your flame. And if you stick around long enough and give them enough power, they absolutely will succeed. So why do narcissists hate authenticity so much? It's because narcissists build up a false sense of self to protect their fragile ego. Essentially, they've abandoned parts of themselves in an effort to feel safe and exist in this world. And when they see you feeling free to be yourself, it can be like a subtle reminder of those abandoned parts. And that may trigger some bad feelings. Of course, you have no control over the parts of themselves that they see and the parts they abandon, and you don't deserve to be a punching bag for any of it. But they will absolutely be jealous that you get to express yourself and they cannot. So when you see the narcissist cutting you or someone else down, essentially, it's like they're saying, what gives you the right to be yourself? And so when we're talking about authenticity, there are definitely levels. And if we're being honest, we all wear a mask of sorts. We may have a professional mask that we wear at the office, and we may have an ever-friendly, despite our actual feelings, mask that we wear when we meet new people. But I can tell you for sure, even though I am a version of my authentic self everywhere, I'm not as open and free in an office setting, for example, as I would be at home. See, we expect that when we're at home around our loved ones, we can exist without any sort of filter. And that's just not the case with a narcissist. And this is especially damaging if you've had highly narcissistic parents, because if that flame was extinguished often enough, you may have trouble sorting out who your authentic self truly is. But the good news is that you can always get back to you. It is never too late. I promise you. My name is Christina and I'm a narcissistic abuse recovery coach. And if you can relate to what we're talking about here today and need a little extra support in finding the you that you were meant to be, check out the link in the description for more information on one-on-one -on -one coaching with me. And now I want to share some really great insight from the comment section on authenticity. Authenticity and your honesty is the biggest narcissistic repellent. And that's very true, isn't it? Now let's talk about another person narcissists love to hate for the most part. There is an exception that we'll get to in a little bit. But generally speaking, narcissists hate sick people. And if you've been sick around a narcissist, you know exactly what I mean. In fact, I have a whole video on the subject that I'll link to in the card that shows up I think over here. It can be hard to tell when I'm filming. So what's it like to be around a narcissist when you are sick? I know some of you know this all too well. And if that sounds like you, I invite you to hit the pause button now and tell us exactly what it's like to be around a narcissist when you're sick. From my experience, I can tell you it's not fun. Of course, being sick is never fun. But if you have to rely on a narcissist for basic care, you might be in big trouble. So what might they do? There are a lot of things. They might question your illness and tell you that you're lying or exaggerating your symptoms. They might outright ignore you or tell you you don't deserve their help. Or they might one-up you and tell you that they're sicker than you, which of course is always possible. But if it happens every single time you're sick or wounded, it's probably not true. So why then do narcissists hate sick people so much? It seems pretty cold, even for a narcissistic personality. But if you look at it this way, when you're sick, you can't serve the narcissist. And to them, serving them is your purpose, so you can't live up to your end of the bargain. You see, narcissists look at everything transactionally. And when you can't provide whatever service they need in the moment, you're useless to them. And trust me, you're gonna feel it. Here's a comment from one of you who's been there. Third degree sprained ankle. He broke me down, devalued, attacked me, left me alone, called me a junkie for taking my painkillers, told me I didn't deserve respect because I don't respect myself, 
He even had the nerve to tell me he doesn't live like this. The house is so dirty. I couldn't walk. How the hell was I supposed to clean? And I mentioned earlier that there's an exception to this, and actually there are two. The first is when the narcissist is in the love bombing or hoovering phases of the relationship. In these moments, they'll go above and beyond to make you feel cared for. Because remember, it's a transaction. They need you to get on board or back on board, and they need you to adore them. And for that service, for that transaction, they're willing to sacrifice and put you first in that moment. So the second exception is what we call an altruistic narcissist. This is a narcissist who gets supply from helping others. And even though they may seem selfless, they have a hidden motive. They want to be seen as the savior. So by helping others, they are making themselves look better. And trust me, they will not hesitate to brag about these selfless acts. So this type of narcissist is definitely more difficult to spot and much better to have around when you're sick. But if you get the sense that they're using your pain to elevate themselves in some way, it's definitely a red flag. All right, now I'm going to ask you, who else do narcissists hate? Hate. If we all come together, I bet we'll come up with enough for a part two. But for right now, let's just talk about how narcissists hate happy people. Where are my happy people out there? If you've been around a narcissist, I know you've felt this. And there are tons of videos out there about how narcissists like to ruin things like birthdays and holidays. Part of the reason for this is because the narcissist isn't the center of attention in that moment. And the other part is they're jealous of your joy. Narcissists hurt other people because they're deeply unhappy. As they say, hurt people, hurt people. And so when you get a promotion at work or someone compliments you on your outfit choice, you might feel like you're floating on a cloud, if only for the moment, until the narcissist knocks you right down. It's kind of their favorite thing to do. And this is when you're going to see venom and contempt come through when there's really no reason for it. And it's confusing, isn't it? Shouldn't someone who loves you be happy when you're happy. That's just not the case with a narcissist. And it's exactly why your happiness is the best revenge. Because when you're away from them, they can't do anything to stop it. And here's a comment from one of you who knows this well. The smile on my face and my happiness is kryptonite to her. Makes her run like hell to the bed of her next victim. Now let's talk about yet another person the narcissist hates. The successful person. Have you ever noticed how a narcissist acts when someone else gets a promotion, wins an award, or buys a nice car? Really anything that shows someone's accomplishing things and feeling good about it. So in these moments around narcissists, usually you can expect that same old contempt and venom coming through, even if they don't outright show it. It's written all over their face. If they do show it, you might encounter eye rolls, rude comments, or just an overall rain cloud vibe. So the translation for all these behaviors and for the outright contempt is the narcissist is silently saying, what about me? I'm the one who matters here. Anyone else's success is straight up threatening to a narcissist, which is exactly why after you move forward from them, going on to bigger and better things is the sweetest revenge. Your wins remind the narcissist that they aren't as special as they thought. Because even if a narcissist does accomplish things, they like to think that they're the only ones who deserve praise. So this is another case where you will find the greatest success after you leave the narcissist in the rearview mirror. And it's also the best revenge. Let's look at some advice from someone who's on the other side of this. Ignore them. Love your best life. Success is the best revenge. Although I have receipts, I decided it's not worth it. And I don't know if that was a typo, but I love that twist on the common phrase. Don't just live your best life, love your best life. So another person that a narcissist can't stand, and I mean truly despises, is the truth teller. And if you're the truth teller of your family or group, you know exactly what I mean. Truth tellers will call out bad behavior regardless of who it's done to. So these are the last people you'll see as flying monkeys for the narcissist. They aren't the ones who will be doing the narcissist's dirty work. I can pretty well guarantee that. Quite the contrary, they're the ones trying to clean it up with a healthy dose of truth. And it's pretty obvious why a narcissist would despise this person. Truth tellers make it difficult for narcissists to manipulate abuse, and exploit others. So what does a narcissist do around a truth teller? So they might avoid or alienate them, but this can sometimes be difficult to do, especially in family dynamics. So if they can't avoid or alienate, they'll do everything they can to discredit this person. Maybe they'll make fun of them, insult their intelligence, and maybe even claim that their motives are impure. This is exactly how the truth tellers so often become scapegoats in the black sheep. 
unfortunately. And here's a comment from one of you in the audience who simply refuses to roll over or stay quiet for the narcissist. I became the empath and truth teller for a reason. And I'm now just realizing why I never felt good enough or truly accepted by the lot of them. I only ever treated them well and loved them, but heaven forbid you speak the truth or make any waves in the illusion of familial bliss. I'm quite fed up with it and find myself at a crossroads. And it's exactly that desire to sweep everything under the rug and avoid facing reality that keeps so many families stuck in toxic cycles. So if you can relate to this and you feel like you're the truth teller, keep being you. But I would also caution, strongly caution, to let go of any expectations that people are going to change. People will only ever change when they're ready. And that's usually when the pain of staying in the same place is greater than the fear of change itself. So keep standing up for yourself and also try to learn to love people for who they are and where they are or to let them go, whichever seems like the healthier option for you. But expecting them to be something they're not probably isn't the healthiest option. And here's one that won't be a surprise to you, but it leads to an important conversation. So please stick with me. Narcissists hate highly empathetic people. And if you ask a narcissist, they'll tell you that they hate empathetic people because they're weak. And they truly believe this. They believe that empathy is something to be exploited. But the two things, empathy and weakness, aren't the same. Here's where the narcissist might get a little bit confused. Someone who's highly empathetic and lacks good boundaries is going to have a lot of vulnerabilities that the narcissist will see as weakness to exploit. So if you are highly empathetic, take this as your sign to check your boundaries especially if you've been hurt by a narcissist. And I want to be clear, I'm not saying that the only way a narcissist can hurt you is if your boundaries are weak. And if a narcissist did hurt you, it's certainly not your fault. But I am saying it's much easier for them to hurt you when your boundaries are weak. So try to take an honest look at where you are right now and see if you need to secure those boundaries. Now let's take this a little deeper than surface level and talk about why the narcissist really hates empathetic people. And the reason is similar to why they hate happy people. You have something the narcissist will never have, not to any meaningful degree. Narcissists lack empathy. And when I say empathy, I mean emotional or affective empathy. This is the type of empathy they see as a weakness because it's the type of empathy that allows you to feel deep, meaningful connections. So let me paint a little picture. Imagine a stranger sitting on a park bench crying. You walk over and ask them what's wrong. They don't want to bother you with their problems, but you can see how much they're hurting and you want to help. So you insist it's not a bother. And when they tell you their story, you almost instinctively imagine what you might feel like in a similar situation. Or maybe you remember a similar situation and how you felt in that moment. You don't twist the conversation to be about you or your experience or your feelings, but you empathize with them and hold space for them to feel what they're feeling. Your empathy in that moment probably means everything to that stranger on the bench. But think about how you would feel walking away from the experience. You're changed too, aren't you? You might feel a deep connection or kinship with this person who was a literal stranger just an hour before. See, what happens here is you connect and you both walk away changed. That's the magic of empathy. And this strength is really a superpower. But the problem comes in when someone exploits the magic and fakes the connection for their personal gain. So imagine you're the one on the park bench crying and a narcissist comes over and asks you what's wrong. They seem to empathize with you and you walk away feeling a little lighter. You feel seen and you feel connected to this person who was a literal stranger just an hour before. But the difference here is you're the only one who changes in this scenario. The narcissist doesn't get that connected feeling, not like you do, but herein lies the danger. They know that you get that connected feeling. And that's why they see empathy as a weakness. The fact that they know you get that feeling falls under what we call cognitive empathy. And the narcissist has it in spades. So what is cognitive empathy? Well, according to Hodges and Myers in the Encyclopedia of Social Psychology, cognitive empathy can be explained as having more complete knowledge about the contents of another person's mind including how the person feels. And I know that might sound a little bit out there like mind reading, but most of us have cognitive empathy. The difference is most of us don't use it to manipulate others. So now let's look at a comment from one of you who learned this the hard way, as so many of us have. I used to confide in my fake empath friend 
She wants to know every part of my life and then pass judgment. Wow, that sounds really familiar. Her relationship with her daughter is awful. The exact opposite of what I have with mine. Her comment, that's because you have codependency. I realize now that she's very jealous. So I think a pretty common thread throughout this is that narcissists hate the parts of themselves that they've abandoned, and they hate people who express things that they do not have. And if you want to know more about the things you have that the narcissist will absolutely never have, click on the video that just popped up on the screen. But before you go, if you haven't already, be sure to hit that like button, and I'll see you next time.